Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, first, want to start off by saying thank you everybody to all you new subscribers, all the great comments that you've been leaving, and all the questions I've been getting, okay? Um, I'm trying to do the best I can to keep up with all the questions and respond to them um, to the best of my knowledge and, and in a timely manner. A lot of them are coming in through Instagram, on the YouTube channel, and in my personal email. So just uh, give me a second. If I don't get to you right away, I will get to you, okay? So um, we've reached a point in this build now where um, we, we kind of hit a little bit of a stall simply because uh, we're in a parts situation, waiting on parts. Um, there's been some issue uh, with the engine, um, getting that put together. We ran into a couple of snags and that's delayed things a lot. But I figured I'd, get, I'd take the time to do an overview of this car because we didn't really start hanging out until I was putting the paint on this car. Um, you didn't see any of the bodywork, you didn't see any of the suspension setup, you didn't see any of the, like, like the hardcore portion of the build. So uh, some of the questions I've been getting are based on that. So I figured while we're waiting, now's a perfect time. And I'm gonna go over uh, where we are in this build. It's a street car, guys. It's not a, it's not a drag car by all means. It's not really a road race car. It's not gonna be any type of sanctioned event car, if that makes sense. It's my car, all right? Um, however, a lot of the things that I've done in this, on this build have been inspired by um, a mix of things from drag racing, autocross, road racing. It's not for any one specific discipline. If I was building a drag car, I'd build a drag car. If I was building a road race car, I'd build a road race car. Some of the problems that you run into is when you're trying to build a general purpose, all around fun, fast car, um, you run into situations where it's kind of a give and take if that makes any sense. Um, things like keeping the sway bar, what kind of suspension you're gonna run, um, how the suspension handles under a load, um, how it handles in cornering. So it's, it's definitely a give and take, and you gotta try to find a happy medium somewhere along those lines. And for those of you who know and have been down that road, you kinda probably can relate to this. So let's get into where we are and have, how, how I have this car set up right now. All right, so we're gonna start from the front to the back, okay? Uh, immediately you'll notice that the lower portion of the radiator mount's been replaced. I cut the old one out. It was all smashed up, replaced it. These are my mounts for my intercooler, along with these mounts that I made right here. It's got rod panels. I worked them in. When I did the engine bay, smoothed everything, filled all the holes, nice. We got our catch can here, valve cover, valve cover, and this is where the PCV valve used to be on the back of the intake. It's a GT40 intake, guys. All right, coming on this side, got the drain. I got a bunch of questions like, what's going on here, okay? So this is actually the, the rear brake line, okay? And I'll show you when we get to the interior. Uh, how I set that up. So we ran the Hydro Boost uh, Maximum Motorsports Conversion Kit. Really, really nice kit, guys. All right. Um, that's a Hydro Boost out of, I believe, I don't know what year, what year. I think it was like a 2000. I don't, I don't recall exactly. All Nikop brake line into a line lock. Okay. So there's no proportioning valve like you normally would see, but I'll show you what I did to find a solution for that. You got your rear. Brake line right here. This is going into the cabin of the vehicle. On the front brake line, goes into the line lock. The line lock splits it. Right side, left side. I, I kind of maintain the stock position here, just under the pinch weld. And I come out right there. Came here. And then up into the caliper. So when I pull the wheel off, you'll see that. All right. Back brake line through the firewall. Here's my proportioning valve right next to me, guys. So I can adjust it 
while I'm driving. So depending on the circumstances, what the road's feeling like, how the car is acting, I can, I can adjust the pressure to the back brakes. All right. The line goes all the way through, through the floorboard in the back, and then to the T. And I'll show you that once we get underneath the vehicle. As far as the clutch cable goes, adjustable UPR, clutch cable with the quadrant. Those are always really nice. Oh, for the steering, I cut the rag joint off and I put a regular universal joint. So it's TIG welded and it's pinned. All right. See that? Okay. We don't play games with that. Fuel lines. Yes. On the Fox bodies, the fuel lines are usually on this side. I wanted to keep the fuel away from the heat because the turbo's on this side. And the downpipe over here right there. I don't want any heat from the exhaust near my fuel lines or my brake lines. So I put them on this side. All right. This is PTFE fuel line. Dash eight, dash six. Okay. Comes down and for the mounts, these are just standard hose hose clamps were for AN lines and they, they bolt together but I drill a hole through them and then bolt them directly to the vehicle so when I get underneath the car I'll show you exactly how they look it's a really clean really clean way of doing it UPR adjustable strut tower plates subframe all front suspension components their SN95 spindles with the Brembo brakes I'll pull the uh, I'll pull the wheel off and, and get to that. Okay, Mystery Turbo from eBay, no brand. It does have a billet wheel, all right? AR75, AR96, okay? That's the, uh, the turbo itself. Now, how did I mount the turbo? If you look here, I used a piece of angle iron, cut it. This is where the front bumper bracket goes. And then I drilled through the frame. I welded a bung so it doesn't crush and give me myself an extra mount. So this thing does, is not going anywhere, okay? All right, turbo mounts here, welded to the flange. All right, there's my two merges, right side, left side. Well, you guys are looking at it from the other way. I mean, but this is the passenger side. This is the driver's side. It goes up to the merge. Wastegate dump. I'm running a single wastegate 50 millimeter turbo smart here. Clean, right? Made a little mount right here. And then here's where the... You can see I welded a, I welded a piece of uh, DOM pipe into the frame so this way when you tighten this down it doesn't crush on itself like how the fronts do all right because this thing crushes all the time and i you don't repair that because the way that bracket slides into the frame rail it captures the end of that tube with a ring and then it tight that's all it holds it that's it's it's really weird turbo drain so and all that okay sve wheels from lmr 255 35 20 and 285 3520 in the back, okay? Um, stock SN95 uh, rear brakes, disc brake conversion, all right? I'm fronting right there with the uh, Brembo sticker on the back. I'll get into the back suspension in a second. I do not like a car without a sway bar, how it drives. All right, it makes a tremendous difference for the street. That's just me. If you don't run a sway bar, cool. All right, I like a sway bar. Wait, you notice on the sway bar, I got the polyurethane, and these are sway bar locks, okay? It prevents the sway bar from moving side to side under load. If you've never locked your sway bar, try it. You're gonna feel a big difference. So I run those locks, they come in all different sizes for any type of car. I typically only do the front, not the rear. All right, back on the brakes, how I got all this set up in the suspension. All right, so these coilovers, these are old school KYB coilovers with, uh, I believe these are the Viking Springs. 
Got that all set up nice. Like I said, and with the UPR plates up top. 13 inch Cobra style rotors. All right, drilled and slotted. Now, look how nice this spins, all right? Nice and free. So now here we get to the, um, the brake conversion that I did. There's a few good videos out there on this and this is what I come up with. 2015 Cadillac ATS. Um, OEM brakes are these calipers. They're original Brembo's. They say Cadillac on here, real nice. I was debating whether I was gonna leave that on there or not. But while setting this up, it was not too difficult of a project, all right? Basically had to drill the spindles out to accommodate the bolts for the calipers because they were pretty big. Just drilled them out. There's like a 916 drill bit that I used, okay? On the spindle itself, okay? This bolt I'm talking about. Now, thing about Brembo's, they're non-floaters, all right? They're solid mounted. So they don't float back and forth. So you want to try to land right in the middle so your rotor is in line with the middle of your caliper, okay? So, I mean, you can't really see it right now, but it's it's right in the middle, almost in the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect, believe it or not, all right? Because the, the pistons will make up for any variation and allow the brake pads to wear. So the worst case scenario would be one set of pistons on one side may stick out a little bit farther than the other side. And we're talking like thousandths of an inch, all right? Um, so in order to do this on, for me, these are, like I said, SN95 spindles with these rotors. These are some online rotors that I got, all right, cheapos. I had to remove off the mounting surface right here on the caliper exactly three millimeters. Three millimeters landed me, here's the center of the caliper, right in the middle of the rotor. And it worked out really, really nice. You want these flat, all right? And to grind them by hand, even though we're only talking about three millimeters, it doesn't sound like much, but it's a lot. To grind them evenly and flat, it's like near impossible. I mean, if you go for it, if you think you can do it. But um, I took it to my local machine shop, charged me a couple bucks. I bought the guy's coffee, you know, and uh, hung out with some friends over there. So it wasn't a big deal. All right, just put them on a bridge port and, and shave them down a little bit. If you change your brake lines to these... Stainless steel brake lines. Routing those brake, brake lines are very important. Okay? Let me show you. It is possible for me to go from the mount and run them up like this and right to the caliper nicey nice. That works. And at first glance, you'll look at it and be like, oh, that's great. But when you turn the wheels, okay, you will rub your brake line with your tire. Now, if we go on the other side, I will show you what I'm talking about. See how the brake line is away from the tire completely? That's what you want. All right? You don't want it over here running doo -doo 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 and then come right here because when you turn the wheel, it's going to rub. Okay, so I've seen people crash their car because of that. So all it is is a half a twist on the brake line. So when I put, when I mounted this on, all I did was give it a twist and it gives me that, it gives me that direction to keep it away from the wheel. All right? And it'll never ever rub. All right. So that's all I got for that. I might need to go with the, uh, the uh, anti bump fucking fancy uh, tie rod ends. We'll see. And the last thing I want to talk to you about with the brakes is the wheels, okay? You got to have the right wheels on here with the proper offset to clear these brakes. And this, this was like the most timely part of this because when I didn't want to buy the wheels and then have it not fit because then I would have lost my mind. But um, so I did a lot of measuring before I went with these wheels. These have a positive 32 millimeter offset. Now, when I was mocking up the car, you've seen pictures earlier, I had some, uh, 
some old school 18 inch Roush wheels. They did fit. Okay, so they did work on this. So just double check your offsets. I mean, I'm at 32 millimeters right now. So it's positive 32 millimeters. So give and take, I figure you could probably get away with mm, 30, maybe 28. 28 is going to be pushing it. You're going to have, uh, you're going to be shaving on the face of the caliper if you run probably 28. Because I, I mean, even either way, you want to give a little, look how much dust is there. So you want to give um, a little bit of flex room just in case, because I mean, you know, things move and stretch around, obviously. But um, I'm at 32 and I can barely fit my finger in there. So that's just uh, information for you guys if you decide to do this yourself. Okay, so this is how I'm dealing with the vacuum line mess that these cars came with. We're, we eliminated all the vacuum line stuff. Um, so from the intake manifold, I'm gonna have a dash eight running up to this block. And then from here, I got the AN, I'm sorry. So then from here, um, I got the um, airline fittings, quick connects. When you get these, get the better ones, all right? The cheap ones are cheap and they're no good, all right? So I think these are the vibrant ones. All right, this is a cheap block, but uh, the vibrant ones are the better way to go, uh, so you don't have any issues. But so that, let me just show you what what happened, what's going on here. All right, so um, GT40 manifold from an Explorer. I tapped this, so this is going to be my reference line. Um, all the stock, all the stock ports on this, we welded them up. You see. All right, a lot of welding going on. This has been ported. All right, that took me forever to do. All right. It's a 75 millimeter throttle body and I port matched it. So it's wide open, all right? And I didn't like, I don't like these adapter plates when you gotta run dual gaskets here. So we just took the adapter plate and welded it all the way around, all right? And so now you just have one gasket to deal with when you're messing with that. And then the uh, the coolant block that typically goes here for the EGR, the, all that EGR stuff's gone, all right? So we don't, we don't play around with that. Now, map sensor is gonna be right here. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm gonna run exactly this. This is only, a, this is a just a pressure transducer I used to mock this up. But, um, and then as far as the finish goes, guys, watch the paint video. All right, I did a paint video on painting the engine block. All the techniques that I used to do this, uh, you know, power steering pump bracket, you know, stuff like that. Um, oh, we're not showing it. Ooh, that's a secret. All right, um, it's all the same. All those techniques apply. All right, same same techniques. So go back, watch that video, um, and I go over how to paint all this engine related component stuff. All right, um, as you can see, we got a bunch of parts on deck. Waiting, transmission's over there, chilling. That's done, all right? And we get back into it over here. I am a paranoid schizophrenic when it comes to wiring a car, okay? So by doing this, it's gonna make sense to you when I go in depth and I really start getting into the nitty gritty wiring this car and I'll explain why we're using this crazy big cable and the placement for everything. So from the front to the back is a starter lead, okay? That's the main ground lead, all right? This is, this is two watt welding cable, all right? And this is four gauge welding cable. This could be my alternator lead, all right? And I have this fused right here, going back to the car. Now I'll show you why. Oh, and note the bulkhead connectors that I'm using. All right, so this is like a, this is a standard straight through bulkhead connector and these have, this is a bulkhead where you bolt rings to so you can tee off of this if you want, okay? On the inside, wiring comes through. You can see, you know, if you need to tee off them, you can grab power and ground if you want. The alternator one is standalone by itself. We're not going to mess with that. Everything's been mounted really nice, and even in areas where there's, it may come in contact, I've made sure that I protected that, that area. 
we come all the way back to the back of the car. Oh, I pre-ran. I'll get into this, but this is my this is my trigger wire for the fuel pump because the ECU is going to sit right here. All right, so I started all that already. And like I said, I'll do a separate video when we get into wiring this whole entire car. Moving towards the back. Here's where it starts getting fancy. Main battery cable, main alternator cable, main ground. 300 amp fuses into this kill switch. It's a Moroso kill switch, all right? But this isn't a standard switch. This is a switch made for cars that are running alternators because it's like two switches in one. Um, the mount for this is basically just some scrap steel that I had laying in the bin. And I made this mount on that. And then I have a main chassis ground right here because it's all welded to the chassis, everything. All right. And then from here, this will go to the battery. And then we'll have separate direct battery grounds for other components such as the ECU and all that. Okay. So in the future, if I ever needed to go to a sanctioning body event where it requires an off switch from the outside of the car, I'm already set up. All I have to do is drill a hole and run it right here. But this, I'm going to control from the driver's seat. If something happens and I go up on the roof, I pull that and it kills everything. Kill the whole car. All right. Coming off the switch, see if you look under there, it's like two switches in one. This goes to the starter, right? I call this the main hot, but it technically only goes to the starter. Alternator, and two grounds. One of these goes straight to the engine block, and the other one goes right here, okay? So we've got a good chassis ground right here, and an engine block, dedicated ground. Teed off of that, Another power line going to that, it's like a car audio block, but I'll get power from that to run everything unrelated to the ECU. So all that, all the chassis power is going to be on that side of the car and anything ECU related will be on this side of the car. It'll keep the noise down, no interference. Um, with that being said, yes, I did cut out an access panel for the fuel hat on the fuel tank. If there's ever an issue, I can just pop this panel off and, and go up inside there. Some guys hate this, but I, I'm a big fan of doing something like this because I just don't want to be stuck out there somewhere and need to drop my fuel tank when I can just pop this off. All right. Um, right here, this is a dual 70 amp leash electronics relay. This is my fuel pump relay. Now, I only need one side of this. So, the wires come through the floor there, down to the fuel pump. They run up here. The green wire that I showed you under the passenger floor pan is the positive fuel trigger. That's gonna trigger this relay. Here's my ground for the relay itself. Power in, power out, all right? With these fuses so something happens down the road or i get stuck somewhere and this relay goes out on me which randy promised me it wouldn't but you never know i can simply come over here unplug the trigger wires plug them into this side disconnect this line here and plug it onto that side and i'm back in business guys all right fuel pump relay so i basically two for the price of one back there all right uh just a little insurance so I know it's a lot I'm throwing at you guys, but this is where we're at with the car. So, you know, it's not like one specific thing that you do while you're building. You know, it's always planning ahead. I mean, I mock this stuff up. Some of the stuff I've mocked up a year or two ago. And now it's finally starting to come together. It's all freshly painted and now we're ready, you know, to move forward. So, now we weren't hanging out at the time. It is what it is. But now we're hanging out and it's cool. Is it overkill? Yes, this whole system is, is overkill and it's a little heavy, but at the same time, 
it's easier to build it bigger and more heavy duty than it is to build it to underbuild it. If we were in an extreme racing situation, we would maximize the underbuilding strategy for weight. I don't mind the extra weight. But when you also use something really heavy duty like this for a streetcar, streetcar has to endure, it has different challenges than a, than a race car. You're, you drive to the store, you shut the car off, you go in the store, you come out, you start the car back up. You need that amperage, you know? Especially when you have, you know, you're running a motor that's all tweaked out and, and all that and all these electronics that we're gonna have in the car that are demanding specific values with amperage and voltage, okay? So, moving on, I'll terminate this and then have this block mounted somewhere around here. So my, my power for my body harness is gonna come from here, all right? Any type of like uh, radio that I'm gonna put in the car or any type of additional electronics are all gonna come from this side of the car. I'm gonna keep them on this side of the car and I don't want them to be anywhere near the wiring for the ECU or the powers and grounds for the ECU, all right? Because that typically, that tends to complicate things when, when uh, you run them uh, next to each other, especially when you run them parallel next to each other. When I mentioned about building stuff for sanctioning body events, um, every class of every race, of every different genre of racing has specific rules when it comes to like cage setup, your harnesses, your harness bar, your kill switch for the electrical side. I mean, there's just so much. I mean, so this, these types of things, this is where specifically now um, they're very specific in those rules, right, that they've learned from, you know, people crash, you know, the cars, you know, um, people get injured. So they, these rules are there to keep people safe. Um, so I've taken, like I said, um, some general theories from various types of racing uh, throughout motorsports and applied them to this car for a street car, okay? So for my seat brackets, on Fox bodies, guys, the seat brackets are absolutely terrible. They all break, and, and this cross brace breaks as well. So I've reinforced this with some steel, and I've, I've welded it all over here. And I've, I've made this angle iron bracket for the seatbelt that comes through your legs, the floor, the floor seatbelt, okay? Uh, a lot of people go directly to the floor but on this car, it's a unibody car, and the frame rail is right there, and it stops right around this area, and I couldn't get through it, and I wasn't going to deal with all that. So, boom, right here. Same thing with the rear portion of the floor pan. I've reinforced it here. I think convertibles kind of come like this. So I've just taken a piece, of, a piece of flat bar, welded it, you know, got my new studs in there and everything like that, and then we get into the cage. Okay? So... It's a standard cage, uh, you know, one of these prefab uh, cages that you got to chop up and then weld to fit into your car. So I put the main, the main hoop actually fit pretty good. And then I put these braces. This got a little messed up during the paint process, so I got to fix this. So then I, I uh, smoothed all this in and braced it to the actual B pillar of the car. So this thing ain't going nowhere, all right? Um, in a lot of racing rules sanctioning bodies you're not allowed to grind on any of this all right they got they want to see the welds and, and all that the welds are good all right i've smoothed them down i've body worked them and because you know, this is my it's got to look good you want to put a six by six plate you know that's standard and a lot of times with this brace a lot of people go to the transmission tunnel um i went through the floorboard directly to the subframe connector that's welded in. So I'm gonna have to jack the car up to show you. You can't really see it, but it comes right through the floor right there and it's welded right to the subframe connector, okay? So I mean, it's stiff, the car, the car is pretty stiff, guys. It's, it's gonna be fun. Now, you know, obviously I'm not running any back seats in this car, so I did do the torque box reinforcements from UPR, all right? Back in the day, uh, 
my buddy Gene from Wild Rides in New Jersey. He, his shop was right down the street from my shop. Um, he, he was the original creator of what we called the battle boxes back then. They were torque box reinforcements that we know of today. But he's still around. What's up, Gene? Um, he's still around. He's still selling cage, top, top quality stuff, guys. Cages and all types of real, real high-end parts for these Fox bodies, right? Um, but, you know, when I was, while I was doing this, you know, I had these real nice mounts here for the rear seatbelts. I'm like, what am I going to do with these mounts? So I've never really seen anybody do this. I mean, but I figured, why not? You know, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, I just made some standoffs out of uh, some chromoly pipe, chromoly tubing. Welded them up on the ends. Like some, I took some heavy-duty washers, welded them up. Kind of like how we used to make bike frames, really. And uh, just cut my pieces and made this little brace. Okay, is it going to do much? It might. Is it super critical? No, but I'm, I'm sure all these little things help. That in conjunction with the strut tower brace that I made for the rear. And all this is, is a piece of DOM tubing. Uh, same material as the roll cage. I cut it, welded it right to uh, where the rear shock goes, straight across. Put these uh, cage gussets in there, welded them up nice, smoothed it out. You know, and there's my rear strut tower brace. All right, so just uh, little details. So as you can see, how I ran the fuel lines, these brackets accommodate 6AN and 8AN fuel line because the size is here. And I run uh, nut certs. Other people know them as blind rivets. I love those things. I've been using them for forever. I drill a hole through the brackets, took the threads out, and then just run this longer bolt through, and it gives you a real, real nice, clean way of mounting your fuel lines. Okay? I've reinforced the transmission brackets. I've welded that all up. Took all the... Because normally on these cars, everything's like um, just spot welded, you know? Here you can see where I did some welding between the floor pan and the cage. I was able to get that from the top. Because I said that one bar is welded right to the right to the uh, subframe connector. Moving towards the back end, or what I would call the business end. All right. Before I did any of the mounting of all this UPR. Control arms. I went in here at the same time when I did the torque boxes, the torque box reinforcements, and I welded everything up here. All right. So this is all spot welded, but I welded all this stuff up. The frame rail, if you could see it down there, that's welded. And I made sure that this thing is going to be as solid as possible. Get into it. Got the Viking coilovers. Really, really nice pieces. I can't wait to feel how these things handle for me this rear end all right sn95 sn95 axles all right with the sn95 brakes fit real nice it widened me out a little bit so when uh fitting these wheels that was all taken into consideration because it's three quarters of an inch longer than the, the fox body housing so i was able to mount these wheels with no spacers to get the stance that I have. And I'll show you that stance real close when I get out from underneath here. Um, I built this pan hard bar DOM tubing. Got some heim joints, welded them up. This bracket is for like a Jeep, like an off-road, it's an off-road, like a Jeep part or something. I got it all nice in there. It's nice and adjustable. And then on this side, I made this bracket, goes up to the frame wheel welded it all up, I gusseted that, okay? And um, so now I have an adjustable pan hard bar. That should work real, real nice. And I did eliminate the little kicker shocks that normally go up in here, all right? We don't, those things are kind of whack. But they work when you have stock suspension, 
but um, we no longer have anything remotely close to stock. I mean, these coilovers um, are, should eliminate the between the coilovers and the pan hard bar and the geometry on all the adjustable control arms. Once again, UPR control arms um, should should give the car a real good feel and try to avoid all that crazy bucking and wheel hop that Mustangs like to do. You see, I just got to make a. I'm going to make a bracket. I'm going to make a cover here that covers up the uh, the fuel line just in case I throw the drive shaft out. It doesn't hit my fuel lines and I you know go up in flames. So that's one of the things that I can get to while we're waiting. Just knock that out real quick. Um, you can see way up there where the uh, brake line goes through the floorboard into the rubber hose that splits out you know, and it goes to each wheel. I eliminated the fuel pump, the, the factory fuel pump. It's just a hat that goes down in there with AN fittings that sucks up. And then I'm coming out with my feed into a pre-filter. It's like 10 micron. No, this is not a gun silencer. This is actually a fuel filter. And I go to the to this 10 micron filter, Bosch 44 style pump. Uh, this, this type of pump's a little bit more racing oriented because it came with a Dash 8 ORB fitting instead of the, uh, the normal way a, a real Bosch would. So pretty cool, pretty cool pump. We'll see how long it lasts, all right? 10 gauge wiring, and then my my post filter, this is 100 micron. And then we go into our feed all the way up to the uh, engine. The return is on, the return is right there, and it goes right to the top of the tank uh, into that hat, that AN adapter hat, all right? Is the wire for my sending unit and then here's the wires for the fuel pump you know go into the car with the bulkhead connectors well, that's pretty much it guys for the way we're set up you can see uh you can see the subframe connectors reinforcements oh this is a sneak this is a little secret i did for some weight i put the square stock brace this and yes there is a strut tower brace above this frame rail. So the frame rails are braced and the strut tower themselves are braced. So we got double bracing back here. Plus it threw me a little couple pounds right over the axle, which is where I kind of wanted it. That's why I put the batteries in the trunk well. And I'm trying to get as much weight in the back of the car as I can because these things are a little bit light in the back and they need all the help they can get. And with that setup, guys, with the SN95 rear end and these particular wheels, the SVE wheels, look at the stance I got. All right. Now, I did roll the quarters. I did that before I painted the car and I used heat. And, you know, this is completely rolled up underneath here. So it shouldn't be any chewing on the tires it may rub a little bit if it rubs well i don't know, I don't know what mustang doesn't rub so whatever um, i christened my paint job the other day fantastic all right first dinger that's what happens when you're working in a small garage um and as careful as i usually am whatever i'll have to do a little touch-up work maybe i'll show you guys the touch-up process um when you mess something up but it is what it is but uh just so you can see exactly the fitment. It's pretty spot on. All right, gives it that nice attitude. Okay guys, so I hope that uh, has answered a bunch of your questions as far as how this car is actually set up for now. If you see something here that I've you know totally missed and you see some issue that is like totally whack to you let me know because uh you said i mean there's so many different ways to do things uh, if it makes sense i'll entertain your suggestion and maybe make a few changes i had my boy jose here from killer racing one day 
and he pointed out to me that uh, the way I have my car set up right now, um, he suggested going with the Hydro Boost, and that's why I decided to do that, and he, made, he talked me uh, into a lot of sense on doing so. So I went ahead and did that conversion. You got to be open-minded when you're doing things, okay? Because uh, that's how we that's how we all get better. You know, we all get better by sharing our thoughts and giving each other suggestions, right? And that's what this channel is all about, and that's what I'm all about, okay? None of that hater stuff. All that hater stuff, you guys can uh, throw that in the dumpster, okay? But before I leave you, um, today's a good day for me to give you a little tech tip about cavity wax, all right? This would be the last step after you've done your restoration project. Uh, this is one of the last things that you want to do, and I'm going to take the time today uh, to go over the body uh, of the car, um, all the areas inside the frame rails, inside uh, the quarter panels, inside the rockers, uh, to get this wax in there to preserve it and protect it as much as possible. Now, when you get into the 3M product, there's the number right there, guys, of the product that I'm using right now. When you get into the 3M stuff, I mean, I'm always talking about 3M stuff because, you know, there's good stuff, bad stuff, and the right stuff. 3M has it all figured out. So, this is our application wand, real simple. Give them a little shake. Take the standard applicator off, and you're gonna put your wand on. Okay, you're gonna take this hose, you stuff it all the way up inside the rockers, you stuff it all the way in places where all the little nooks and crannies, and you spray this. I don't know if it'll spray for you guys. I'm gonna give it a little test shot. Oh, all right, see what I'm saying? So this product is the same, it's a similar type of product, except this is more of like an oily based, brownish, nasty product. I'm sure it works, it's kind of like a cosmoline almost, but even more oil, oilier than a cosmoline, it's just really weird. Um, so this is a very good product, and this is a very good product. Now, 3M recommends three coats, okay, or three passes, so one, two, three, no drying in between, but um, what I'll do is I'll do this twice. I'll give it like a couple hours in between the first three times, the three coats or three passes, and then I'll give it a couple hours to dry up, and then I'll go back again and hit it three more. I mean, you're not going to hurt anything by applying too much, okay? But not enough is no good. So I'll just give you a little quick overview on one of the frame rails, how this works. And um, you know, definitely, 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 this is a major step. You've got to do this because your car will start to rust on the inside, you know, and then down the road, a couple months later, you're gonna to start to see little bubbles and things start happening to your paint, and next thing you know, you got a rust hole, all right? So, um, yeah, I'll show you how this works real quick. Give it a little shot, okay? Um, in the rockers, I had done some body work to these rockers, so, you know, I've got my holes in there. Stick it, all. look how nice this goes all the way in. Now that's all the way forward, I spray and pull out at the same time. No pun intended on that one. Okay, you do the other side. Goes all the way forward. Just like that, all right? Do the whole car, do everything. All right, so with that being said, guys, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for taking interest in the build. I hope you got something out of this for your project. Oh, I'm getting ready. I chopped up my old downpipe and uh, getting ready for when the motor comes to make the new downpipe. I'm all pre-polished and pre-cut, ready to rock and roll, so there's no playing games because, I mean, I'm serious about getting this thing running. Uh, soon, I'm, I, I want to drive it, you know, I've been staring at this thing forever, but um, all right, guys, hit that subscribe button, guys, uh, you've been great so far, everybody's kind of jumping on board with this project, I really appreciate it, and um, stay tuned, because things are coming, all right, motor's coming, we're still going to do some body work, I promise you guys that, I did promise this video at one point, we got it done, 
uh, one step at a time. I do have a video on some body work coming to you that I did promise. All right. And we're going to have a super good time uh, when this motor finally gets done and gets put in the car because uh, there's a lot of different techniques that I haven't, that I haven't done in a long time. And uh, I'm looking forward to jumping right into it. All right. So stay tuned for that coming. Be safe, everybody. All right. And I'll catch you in the next one. All right. Peace.